Welcome back to another episode of Scofield Welding. You guys, I'm so excited to bring you this episode. We are laying out the frame to the bed build, all right? I have decided I'm gonna upload these into pieces and parts. This is gonna be a second gen 2002 Dodge Ram 3500 Dually extended cab. Yes, it is an extended cab, but guys, first things first. I get asked a lot of questions about what kind of welding apparel do I use? What do I use? What's my shirts? Where do I get them? Whatever else, all right guys? Up in smoke. They are a Canadian based company, a great guy to work with and just phenomenal. He's been a welder, he's done this, he knows what's needed in the industry. So let me show you kind of what I got going. Okay guys, so one of the biggest things when it comes to uh, clothing it's burning up. I do not like being burned. I hate being burned. It's my least favorite thing about welding. Uh, I got scars on my arms to prove it. Guys, these leather sleeve hoodies, they're a spark stopping, wind stopping. They're a great hoodie and a great, uh, great asset to your clothing line. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is for a little warmer weather, all right? These Nova shirts are pretty flipping amazing. Now, it is just a, it's an FR shirt in the middle, but it's got a Carbon X sleeve on the outside. These things are spark stopping too. Incredible what this stuff does. A Carbon X material, I don't know a whole lot about it, but what I do know is we welded a whole bunch of 24 inch 500 wall with it, and it is hard to burn through this stuff. It protects you. You're not too nervous about getting burned up, but it is a lighter garment. So uh, for warmer days or, or hot days, this is a better, better garment than wearing a hoodie, all right? So for cold days, always wear my hoodie over maybe another hoodie if I have to. I'm a layerer, so if it gets cold, I'm gonna throw a hoodie on underneath a hoodie, so. My most favorite thing right now. I'm freaking so excited about this. This is an FR welding shirt. Now it is just a regular shirt. So for hot, hot days, we now have a phenomenal garment. This thing has been awesome. We welded on the bridge with it um, for the past three weeks, I believe, is how long we've been welding with it, and it has held up great. It does have a pocket that's big enough for your iPhone. New pocket pin deal right there, so you can put your soap stones or whatever you need in them. They are long, and uh, man, they've been just great. Kind of a uh, little bit taller collar, which I really like, but hey, lime green stitching. Okay, love the lime green. But there are different colors in this. Guys, go check them out. There will be a link down at the bottom of this video. Up in Smoke Welding Apparel. These guys are phenomenal. They know what they're doing. They build great, great garments, things that last, things that are going to keep you from getting burned up. If you're like me and you get tired of being burned up, go check out Up in Smoke. All right, everybody have a great rest of your day. Hope you enjoy the video. Hey, we put a lot of effort into this video and we hope you love it. Be blessed. See ya. Guys, we're super excited to bring this to you. This is going to be a second gen welding bed and right now we're building it all on the frame I am going to be putting out prints and and a how-to video on how to build this bed um, it's gonna be detailed enough that you could build it on a set of jack stands pick it up and stick it on a second gen bed now you can take a few measurements and figure some things out for yourself and possibly tweak it to where it it will fit a uh, third gen, fourth gen, you know, something like that. But right now this bed is going to be detailed with cut lists, um, your supply lists, everything on this bed. So right now what we got is a bunch of two inch, 3 16 tubing. We got our runners that are running um, two inch. We have to put about a 3 16 spacer between it to get everything to line up. So on this frame where this is running along this bed, we had to put two 3 16 inch spacers, which are gonna be welded to the bottom of the frame, and that way it just sits good. Um, it is the length of the frame, I mean, it is the width of the frame, and so a bunch of two inch on the top, and then we did a four inch step up, which is gonna allow you for some deeper boxes down underneath. We're gonna do a 20 inch oxygen rack. We're gonna take up the front end of this. Right now we're just getting the frame all basically situated exactly where he wants it. It is a full length bed. There is no chopping on the frame. Keep building. It should be pretty self-explanatory, but if it's not, uh, I will do voiceovers on what we are doing throughout the video, just kind of explaining it so that it's super easy to follow along. The full how-to video will be on the website for sale, plus the detailed drawings on cut lists and where to lay everything out for Lincoln or for a Miller. Man, it's gonna be just a cool bed, I think. So you guys stay tuned, be blessed, and we'll see you in just a bit.
Okay, guys, let's talk about this bed just a little bit. This is two inch, uh, two by two, three sixteenths tubing in the front. Um, some two by two runners running down the, the frame rail. And then uh, some two by four to help with the step up. All three sixteenths tubing. But that is where we are at for day one, getting it laid out. And then, uh, then we'll start cutting tubing, getting the frame welded together, and then start laying on some uh, skirting. Right here you can see that we got the levels out and we're, we're going ahead and we're, we're leveling the level out. So we got it bumped up against the tire, leveling it out and Randy's got one on the other side and then we're pulling a, a measurement across your wheels. Now if you got wider wheels and whatnot, you got a little more area that you can either add a bigger fender to or you can stretch your bed a little wider. So that's up to you guys on how you want to do that. But these are pretty standard tires. The way we built this is the fender is actually going to be almost a little bit past the tire. So just something to think about when you build your bed. Right? Well, it's 29. Oh, mine's 29 and a quarter now. Three eighths. Okay, right there. Yep. How's your day going, Pete?
to really be paying attention to super square centering up the frame on your truck and just really taking the time to make sure that that frame is right because if you don't the other pieces are going to not fit quite like they should so just really pay attention to your frame make it square make it right the frame on this is going to be in the detailed drawings this is kind of just an overview to show you what it's doing and all of the dimensions and everything will be in the drawings now as far as how you're going to mount this the front the front two runners are after we got them welded up and we got them centered up where they needed to be randy went ahead and took a drill and drilled up through the bottom and and then tapped that hole with i don't remember what he tapped it with but just make sure that you're using grade eight bolts and uh and that's how we did it we did lock and nuts and lock and what or not nuts sorry we did lock and wa washers and then ran that bolt up in there and just uh, torqued them down. It was a great way to mount the front. On the back side, we did channel iron. We found two bolt holes through the channel iron. And the, the way that this bed is built is your runners are actually the width of your frame. So what you're going to do is you're going to bolt your channel into the frame and then where it hits on your on your bed frame you're going to go ahead and weld that out that's how you're going to mount the back so just pay attention to that kind of stuff make sure that your frame is square and you guys should do all right Yeah. 